thank you very much and uh, i will request all my students to take maximum benefit of your lecture thank you sir thank you raman sir well thank you very very much indeed for that lovely introduction it's really my pleasure and you know what you don't look old enough to have 40 year plus <laughs> years experience yeah, yeah. So that that's fantastic yeah, yeah. and um, mm -hmm. you know you've had a lot of great experience with people like schlumberger halley burton and baker hughes and weatherford and i noticed that you've taken part in a lot of papers around the world and conferences so really you also bring a great amount of experience uh, to the situation and i always think that um it should be an information exchange um information uh, and so never a one way process so i'm sure that you'll agree with me that we all bring something even the youngest student who is a, who is appearing today in this uh, webinar can have something to offer that that he can teach or she can teach so i'm mindful of the fact that we have um a limited amount of time so if you uh, allow me that we will get the, uh, going with the session okay so i'm very happy to see that we've got 100 participants online at the moment wow you know that's just something to be very very grateful for i understand and we're expecting more so obviously some people are operating under the rule that you should always be 15 20 minutes late all indians pakistanis bangladeshis have this thing that you know we have to be 15 20 minutes late but hopefully they'll be joining us very soon we let me just go through a little bit of housekeeping if you don't mind just to set the scene for this so this is going to be a non technical um session so and this is the highest number that we've ever had is that right uh, daima i think from the committee you've told me that we've never had as many right yeah. yes sir yes sir wow fantastic so that in itself starts us off on a very very positive note um now i would like to try my best to interact with you now i know it's difficult it can be difficult with so many people online um so let me tell you a couple of ways in which you can interact with me if you look at the bottom right hand side of your screen there's a button called reactions so if you click on reactions there are two options so one is a thumbs up so uh, a thumbs up tells me that you agree with a point that i've made or something you like that i've said so give me a thumbs up So how about uh, a few people on there just give me a thumbs up let's test that functionality ah okay excellent i can see oh wow wow i can see lots of thumbs ups all over the screen fantastic i i shouldn't need to teach you guys and girls anything about zoom because i think that you are using it very regularly for your lectures i hear um i have muted everybody so if we can stay on mute that would be great because it'll cut out any background noise um oh and another reaction now Some of you said that you wanted a little bit of comedy and enjoyment and relaxation during this. Is that right? So, uh now you know that every comedian likes to hear the laughter. <laughs> Because I've muted you all, I won't be able to hear your laughter. So, if you find something I say funny, then I want you to use the other emo emoticon which is the clapping hands. And then I know that oh there we go. Let's use the clapping hands and then I know that um Come on Dr RK Vidge come on get in with the fun let's have the clapping hands from you too you are not excused just because you are the director today <laughs> all right so you are just you're another participant a very welcome participant today um now to also say that i uh, will have if you can please set your mobile phones on silent that would be fantastic so that you're not distracted by the phone during this session now when i uh, give you this information when i have this inter interaction with you i'm sure that there are going to be things that you are wanting to ask me or feelings you have or suggestions and comments and discussions so in order not to spoil my flow i will go through what i have to say to you but can you please make a note of your question on a piece of paper and then we will have a faq right a frequently asked questions section a question and answer session if you like at the end uh, so that we can uh, interact with each other how's that Absolutely. if that's good give me a thumbs up excellent all right all right i right. get good so everyone is agreeing there wonderful wonderful it 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 the thumbs up also helps me understand that you guys and girls are all listening and i want you to focus i can i'm scrolling through your images and what handsome people i have online with me today some of you have got uh, uh profile pictures and some of you are being brave enough to show your video i'm i'm easy with both obviously it makes it more interesting for me to interact with you if you've got the video on 
but I do understand that during the pandemic, maybe you're not looking fantastic right now because you haven't visited the barber and you've got a long beard. <laughs> but um, uh, so you, a lot of you have got your pre-COVID uh, pictures online. Would you like to see mine, everybody? Would you like to see my pre-COVID picture? Here we go. How's that? <laughs> Can you see it? That's my pre-COVID picture. That, that's how handsome I used to look before the pandemic. And today I've made an effort. I've made an effort for you. I can see Dharti is uh, smiling at that one. Thank you, Dharti. You didn't give me the clapping hands. Huh? If you find something I'm finding funny, you gotta, you gotta give me the, there you go. Thank you. Thank you, Deep. Thank you, Kripal and Vaidik. All the best. Kaushik, brilliant. Okay, so you see, I need feedback from you. Every performer, every presenter needs love from his audience. And to me, the two ways that in which you can react with me is the thumbs up and the clapping. Okay. So that's uh, everything, I think, for the housekeeping. As I said, we'll be going from, you know, 60 minutes to 90 minutes. It's my responsibility to keep you, the audience, engaged and motivated and on board. And I'm going to be sharing some amazing tips with you during this session, which you can start using from tomorrow. Okay? You can start using these from tomorrow. Now, I would like to also bribe you with some gifts. So uh, I recently co-authored a book called Advice to Your Younger Self. And it is aimed at just the target market I have in front of me today. So by the end of this session, I will be giving away to three people in this meeting, a signed copy with a personal message from me to uh, three people on this call. And I will decide later how I'm gonna do that. One way you can do it is by interacting with me, asking great questions and um, you know, just interacting, that's all. And being on board. I, and I will do that at the very end of the call. Now, one second, I've got a few people who are still coming into the call. Uh, Jainam has just come in. So we've now got 101 people on the call. Now, a lot of you people have said to me that you'd like some um, tips on communication. All right. Now, I will hopefully be demonstrating some of the things on communication that you would like to see. But uh, one of the big tips that I can give you is that there are three big rules of communication, three things that make every communication successful. And those three things are, are you ready? Preparation, preparation, and you guessed it, preparation. It's all in the preparation. So ask the committee how much preparation that we have all done together for this session, all right? So the main thing you need to do is you need to know your audience. You need to know your audience, okay? Um, and so I know, for example, that we have people uh, on this call from uh, PPDU, which is Pandit Dal Petroleum University, and we've just had a chat with the director. I've got people from University of Dhaka. Bangladesh, give me a thumbs up if you're from the University of Dhaka. I really, really want to know who I've got online from, from Bangladesh. Okay, okay, maybe you'll come across later, but wonderful to have you with you. Um, fantastic. Uh, Namrata, I think you gave me a, a clapping sign there. So that was just applause or was it you're from the University of Dhaka? All right, we'll, we'll interpret that later. We've got people from the Dawood University of Engineering from Pakistan. Or are they going to be late like all Pakistanis? <laughs> are, they, are they here on time? Wonderful. We had a couple of people there from that university. Um, we've got people from MIT, Pune, that's back in India, and uh, Gujarat Ayurveda University. We've got people from uh, DDU which stands for Dharamsena Desai University. So you must excuse my pronunciations. If I do get them slightly wrong, please excuse me. You can correct me later. And we've even got a teaching assistant from the Botswana International University of Science and Technology. So what kind of people have I got online? See, what I said at the beginning, that's very important for me to know my audience. For any presentation, I need to make sure that the things are suitable for the audience. So, of course, I've got the director online. I've got students, undergrad students. I've got a few faculty members online as well. So we have assistant professors. Thank you for being here, sirs and madams, uh, and sparing your time. Uh, we have engineers. And of course, the majority of them are petroleum engineers. We have petroleum engineers. Uh, we have chemical engineers. Uh, we have at least a couple of medical students and some businessmen. Uh, we have a research scholar and also a teaching 
a system. Now, another tip I can give you is from a, a very famous public speaker called Tony Robbins. Uh, have you heard of Tony Robbins, anybody? Famous uh, public speaker from America, who is fantastic, Parag and Deep, I can see that you know him, and Harsh, you've heard of him as well. If you haven't heard of Tony Robbins and Shyam, uh, Mukund and Sanjeev, I can see that you've heard of him as well. Now, Tony Robbins talks about something called being in the state to do a presentation. Now, look at me and how I'm coming across and in the energy level. Do you feel that I am delivering passionately? Do you feel that I'm in the state? Yeah? Now, what did I do to get myself in the state? Thank you, Ashish. Thank you, Dhruv. What did I do to get into this state? I didn't just roll out of bed and five minutes before this presentation come and greet you and not having had a shower and just being blurry eyed. I have done all the preparation that I needed to, to know my audience, know my topic, and to be, uh, even because, even during pandemic, I had a shower and a shave and I got, and this is the first time I'm wearing a tie for three months. And this is all in your honor, okay? In your honor, I'm wearing a tie for the first time in three months. Thank you for the applause there because it's, it's really unusual for me because I've been in, uh, locked indoors for three months. I don't know whether you realize this, but in Saudi Arabia today, we are under 24 hour lockdown, 24 hour lockdown for the next six days. So here we are. Welcome to the state of Saudi Arabia. Can you see that in the background now? Um, and I am I'm really, really happy to be greeting you from this country. I hope that some of you have a, a chance to visit us. And we had a couple of members of the committee and uh, Daima and everyone who I met personally in, um, in Saudi Arabia recently when they came here. And it was such a, an honor to have you as guests. So let's move on. I, having known my audience, what's the next step that you have to do? The next step that you do after knowing your audience is to say, well, what is it that my audience wants? Okay. What is it that my audience is after? I'm going to change the background a little bit. So do you like my camel? There you go. Just to show that I am from Saudi Arabia. <laughs> I can see a few smiles going on there. I want to keep you engaged. I have to use all the tricks I can to keep you engaged. This is Cami the camel. And she accompanies me on uh, most of my presentations. And uh, I'm here. <laughs> okay. Looks like I'm going to have to mute everyone again. So here we go. So I spent a couple of hours last night looking through the Google Forms. Now, all of you that are on this meeting com um, uh, completed a Google form, right? You put your name, your designation, and your university, and all of this. Now, I spent an hour and a half going through all of the uh, feedback that I saw, and I saw that a lot of you people, and I, what I did was I grouped, I looked at keywords. What are people looking for from this presentation? Well, I saw that a lot of you want to have uh, uh, information on staying positive and motivated. 52 votes, 52 votes went on that one topic of staying positive and motivated. So I can see that a lot of you are, is that's what you're looking for from the session. And I guarantee you by the end of the session, you're going to be positive and you're going to be motivated. All right. Then you want to know about dealing with tough times during this COVID period, right? So that's 18 votes went to that. And being inspired, another couple of votes went there. So overall, I will call this group of things you want motivation, okay? And, I, and that's 72 votes altogether for just the area of motivation. And I guarantee you, I will cover that with you. Then the second biggest thing that I found from the comments was you wanted self-development and information and knowledge, learning new things. Um, you wanted to sell, uh, diverse development, help to focus on goals, uh, communication skills, and helpful life guidance. Now, I put all of this into the one area called self-development, and that will be the second part of my talk to you today. Okay, I think we'll get rid of the camel now, and that we will go back to my usual background, which is not you you're here in my office at the moment and so on. What else? The third thing that, I, uh, uh, that everybody uh, wanted from me was fun, entertainment. You want release from the monotony and the boredom of being um, in this lockdown, right? 
<laughs> okay, so I'm, see I'm seeing a few nodding people there. Yes, we want relaxation and boredom. Aman, thank you. Deep, thank you. And uh, Sanjeev, yes, I'm seeing lots of thumbs up. Ayush, Het, very, very good. I'm going to scroll on the screen. Chirag, Rahul. Oh, looks like we have a lot of comedy fans here. Huh? Yes. Kunal. yes, we have tons of comedy fans. So I'm going to have to keep on muting you guys. So please, can you make sure that you are on mute? And that way we won't get some background noise, okay? All right, what I'll do is I'm going to not allow people to unmute themselves. Here we go. So now you cannot unmute yourself. You want to be relaxed and refreshed. So now there were a few other things that people wanted, which I should tell you that I'm not going to be covering in this session because we've only got about an hour together before we go into the question and answers. So you wanted information on the petroleum industry, all right? And even I just, we had 13 votes for that. I have to say that, look, in the limited time, it's impossible to cover everything, right? So what I want to do is focus uh, on soft skills in this session. Hope that's okay with everyone. So also people were saying confidence building. Well, you're looking at someone who's been trying to develop his confidence for over 40 years. So pick up the tips and maybe we can make confidence building another part of the session. Um, you, I, one person said that I want to know how to stand up for myself in tough situations. And a couple of people who are business people said, I want to expand my business. Well, the information that you will get during this session should allow you to be more confident, more clear thinking, and should allow you to uh, see your business. Um, just thinking about the comedy there for the moment, I didn't have to look very far for the comedy because when I was going through the uh, form, the Google form, you know, there is that one guy that, who wants to be a hero who's not going to answer the questions in the way that you want them, right? So you know the type I mean, and he's a typical guy in the Bollywood movies, right? So while everyone is running around and you get this Shah Rukh Khan character, usually he's sitting like, imagine your canteen and everyone's running around in the canteen and there's this one dude in the middle who, who's usually wearing glasses, right? And he's calm while everyone around him is running around. Normally he has a tili in his mouth, right? He's got matchstick in his teeth. And he's sitting there with a cowboy hat and you can't even see his eyes. He says, and it was so, we had one hero like this on the Google form. And listen, if you recognize yourself, don't worry. I'm not making fun of you, but I'm laughing with you because I think you're really cool. So why is he cool? Because uh, the, answer, the answers he gave were, were hilarious. And, and I'll tell you now, uh, I'm going to identify the hero. And just so that you don't feel bad, I'm making fun of you. I'm going to give you one of the books. All right. So there is a signed copy of my book coming to this guy. And I'm not going to mention his name. So when it says designation, all the normal people, they said, oh, designation, right? I'm a faculty member. I'm a research scholar. I'm a businessman, student, engineer. You know what Hero wrote? He wrote, Awe, upon Google form ni fil karta, yaar. His answer was, obviously, student. <laughs> so that's exactly what he wrote. Obviously, student. <laughs> so then organization. So when the question was uh, organization, again, uh, everybody was writing PPDU, DDU, Dhaka University, Daud University. He wrote what he wrote? You will see when you see my email address. Pata chal jayega aapko. <laughs> That was hilarious. So he didn't want to write his university. He just said, you'll see when you see my email address. But his best answer, the one that made me laugh the most, oh my God, was the, the last uh, question. If you remember the last question, it was, what is your expectation from the session? So, we want uh, inspiration, we want comedy, we want uh, motivation, all this. Hero ka job kya tha? Are? mobile number So he was uh, really frustrated. Mobile number <laughs> So anyway, listen, Hero. Um, don't mind me making a little bit of fun. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. All right. And uh, like I said, we need people like you in this world. We absolutely need people. Because the other people did exactly what was expected of them. You thought out of the box, Mr. Shah Rukh Khan, hero. So, um, uh, Daima, 
uh, after this session, I'm going to contact you to identify the, the gentleman and uh, hopefully uh, he will enjoy reading the book, which I co-authored called Advice to Your Younger Self. Now, I'm sure he'll probably ignore all the advice <laughs> because he's not going to be according to what he wants to do, but that's fantastic. So, okay, back to the session. I have identified my audience. I have identified your needs and I've made it very clear that this session is going to be in two parts. One is gonna be, I'm gonna cover the areas of motivation, inspiration, how can I make you feel positive during this pandemic period? I'm sure that a lot of you are suffering. And this is a very serious side to this. There's loneliness, it, there is negativity, and I'm gonna tell you, and one thing I promise you, I will not give you sound bites. When I say something, I will back it up with examples of how I use this in my own life, okay? Is that good with you? I'm not just gonna give you sound bites. So really, I'm gonna give you fantastic. Now, thank you, Ritan. Thank you, Dromil, Daval, Shaiban, Nihar. Fantastic, I'm glad that you agree with all that. Brilliant, Parag, uh, Dharti, superb. So I'm, I'm on track. So we've done the analysis of expectations. Let's hit the very first session. Motivation at times of crisis. Wow, we are going through a big, big, big change right now, yeah? Let me throw a challenge at you right now. Everybody should have a pen and a piece of paper. I can see some of you, yes? Uh, yep, I can see uh, everyone has, yes, Shubham. Thank you for holding the pen up. I saw you waving there, brilliant, thank you. And I hope you have paper and uh, Vedic, yes, I can see you have paper and pen. So superb. Everybody should have some writing implement. Now here's what I want you to do. Whichever one your dominant hand is. So if you are right-handed, I want you to hold your pen in your right hand. If you are left-handed, if you are a lefty, I want you to hold your pen in your left hand. Super. So I can see Dhruv is holding his pen in his right hand and Shub, uh, Shubham also right hand. So good. Now, take any piece of paper or your pad or whatever you have, and I want you to just write your first name. Write your first name on the piece of paper. Okay, very simple. And I'm gonna do it with you. I'm gonna do it with you as well. So here I have, I got my piece of paper. Write your first name only. Anywhere on the piece of paper, doesn't matter. Okay, so once you've done that, I would, excellent, thank you, Dharti. Brilliant, and you're showing it to the screen, brilliant. Very cooperative students here. Brilliant, brilliant. So hopefully by now, you, uh, everyone will have written their name unless you've got a very long name, like our Sri Lankan friends, huh? South Indian, my goodness, oh my goodness, you have such long names, huh? <laughs> I, I tell you what, I had three South Indian friends at university, and I am the only one out of the group of friends who could say all three of their names in one breath, all right, in one breath. Branavan Vyakasparan Rebati Balasubramanian Kamalini Kadir Kamanadam. And that was just the first one. <laughs> and we, uh, we, we lost touch because I couldn't remember his email address, actually. <laughs> Way too long. But I am so happy that you've written that. Now, second part of the exercise. I want you now to take the pen in the other hand, the non-dominant hand. Okay, good. Switch hands to your non-dominant hand. So if you're left-handed, put it right. Right-handed, put your hand. Now, write your name again on the piece of paper, underneath where you wrote it before. Write it again. Now with your non-dominant hand. Oh, this is, this is awkward. Oh my God. Ah. <laughs> yes, thank you, Dhruv. Your, and Dharti has managed to die. Good job, Dharti, not bad at all. Should, um, Shubham, yep, I can see that. And uh, Bhuma, yes, yes. Ayush, wow. Pranav, very nice. I like it. I like it. So how, I want to know, um, how did you feel when you were doing that? Did you feel uncomfortable when you were doing the, with the, un, um, no, Dharti, you, you are uh, able to write with both hands, huh? You, you're giving me a shaking of the head. So did anybody feel uncomfortable? Harsh? You felt a little bit uncomfortable with the change. I put you in discomfort. Now, Dati, you must be that word. Does anybody know that word um, that means you can write with both hands? Type it in the uh, chat box for me. 
Anybody type it in the chat box. Yeah, Deep found it a bit difficult. Yep. <laughs> Ambidextrous. There you go from uh, Mayank Sina. Well done. And yes, I got it from uh, Makunk and uh, yeah, a couple of other people as well got that. And the Amir said, thank you very much, all the way from the UAE. And yes, <laughs> it was a bit difficult, wasn't it, uh, Deep? So uh, yes, somebody who can write with both arms is called ambidextrous. You know what? I would give my right arm to be ambidextrous. That's a joke, by the way, for those who understand very subtle humor. <laughs> I had a friend who would give his right arm to be ambidextrous. So uh, what I want to focus on is that because I put you through this change, suddenly you were out of your comfort zone, all right? You were out of your comfort zone and you suddenly found yourself trying to cope with change. Now, I'd like to tell you a little bit about a lady called uh, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. El Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. Now, I don't, I, give me a thumbs up if you've ever heard of that name before. All right, Deep has heard the name, right, okay. But yes, I can see that most of you have never heard that uh, uh, Sarania. Very good. You've heard the name before. So Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, for the rest of you, yep, I can see that Yogini has also heard that name. Fantastic. So you've obviously done Mukund. You've heard the name as well. So you've obviously done a little bit of work on change management, which is one of my fields um, that I work in, uh, that I used to work in in Saudi Aramco for over a decade. Now, let me show you. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm gonna show a white screen. So hopefully everybody should be able to see a white screen at the moment. So if we draw a, no, 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 please, can I uh, ask everybody not to start drawing and let me do the drawings, <laughs> okay? So, um, so I'm gonna just ask everybody not to draw. So I'm gonna ask very politely. So the viewers, please, would you let me do the drawings, okay? Thank you very much. Um, so. I'm going to draw an, a y-axis and an x-axis, all right? Now, the y-axis is your mental well-being, your, um, uh, you know, how you are functioning as a human being, your competency, and the uh, x-axis is time. Now, the, the um, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross did some studies on how people generally cope with change, and with, specifically, she did it on bereavement. Now, I know that um, the situation, other situations like career choices we go through are not as bad as bereavement, but it's very, very important to understand the psychology of change. So the curve looks something like this, and I'll explain it in a minute. So it, it goes up, it dips down, and it then goes up again like this, okay? So what Elizabeth Kubler-Ross said was that there are basically seven stages of uh, change that people normally go through. Initially, we suffer a little bit of shock. And we are very surprised at the event and we can't believe it. So the next phase, so we're still on the up though, but then we have a second stage, which is called denial. Now at this stage, we are not willing to believe that it's happened. It's not true. So let's relate it to the COVID situation at the moment. Initially, when we heard about the a pandemic and that, we, that you know, it was killing all these people around the world, you must have had a little bit of shock, right? But then the denial came in. No, 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 it's not happening, it's not true. But then once you did accept the fact that it happened, you may have gone through some frustration, right? Let me see if I can spell that word correctly. Great, so you have some frustration. What's happening here is you've accepted the fact, but you are still angry. Now you're getting frustrated and angry. Now at the very bottom, we have this area, which is the worst area that you can possibly experience that you get depressed about the situation. Okay. And the quicker you can come out of this, the better. Now the next step of it is that you, uh, you accept it. And uh, it's the next stage is called experimenting you start experimenting you have initial engagement with the new situation and you start accepting it here comes now that you're starting to make powerful decisions right you make a decision that you're gonna be more positive 
and you're going to learn how to cope with the situation, okay? And what's the final step? It's called integration. Integration. So you've decided that it's your new reality and you are then reborn as a new individual. So having awareness of this is amazing because it allows you to understand how to cope with a change, all right? Initial shock, then you deny it. You can imagine when people are, uh, are in this situation that they, uh, that they deny everything and then they get frustration and depression, then they start experimenting, they go to that decision and uh, come out with integration. So I'm just gonna leave that up there for a second. I'm gonna stop sharing and go back. We've got more people joining us now. So that's great. They're a little bit late, but hi ho, that's what happens. <laughs> so we've now got 97 people on the line, which is fantastic. Really, really happy with that. Okay, so you've coped with that change, right? Let's now look at another area of motivation. Now, I've talked about how you can cope with that, but finding your passion, uh, I'm, I studied as a mechanical engineer. You know that, right? Was that my motivation? I have to say it wasn't. I was doing it for my dad. So <laughs> this is a trick question. How many of you are doing engineering or medicine or business because your mom and dad want you to, right? Yep, yep, yep. I got a few people there. It's expectation, right? expectation of society, expectation of your parents, of your, maybe you've got a brother or sister who also was an engineer. I was most definitely doing with my dad. And, um, but I knew that my passion wasn't there. So I got my degree in mechanical engineering from the city university, but I knew that I was passionate about people. I wanted the people. Now there's, there's a couple of films that I would recommend that you watch um, because in my life, a lot of films have changed my view on, on life. And the films that I would say are, for example, have you, has anybody seen Tare Zameenpar? A great Amir, oh yes, Tare Zameenpar, which is incredible movie. Yes, I can see lots of thumbs up there. Amazing movie, came out quite a few years ago now, right? Yes, yes, oh wow, that looks like all of you have seen it. It's, it's terrific viewing, and did you know that in India, for example, it's now required viewing for teachers, uh, teaching students, uh, to people who are becoming teachers, it's required viewing for them. Uh, the other movie I would say, uh, which is a really fun one, and I see a lot of you are into comedy, is uh, Three Idiots, another Amir, mo Amir Khan movie, right? Which also talks about the expectations of society. I can see lots of smiles on camera. So obviously you've, uh, you guys have seen that movie. If you haven't, seriously, if you haven't, those two movies, put them on your playlist because not only are they funny, but they are inspirational and they do, they do uh, make you think about life. And I love watching movies, but I love watching inspirational movies even more. There's one other movie I would recommend is Dead Poets Society. So write that down if you've never heard of it. Yep, it is a, um, a Robin Williams movie. Yep, and Shubham has already seen it. Great, did you like it? Give me a nod. It's an amazing movie about a teacher who really understands his students and his students want to do stuff that they're passionate about and he really helps them. And you know what? I would say Dead Poets Society is one of the movies that changed my life. I really thought about my life after that movie. So that really helped me. What else can I tell you about motivation? I would say that impossible is absolutely nothing. I turn the expression on top of his head. You know, people say nothing is impossible. I like to say that the word impossible is nothing. And again, I promised you that I wouldn't just give you sound bites. I would give you examples in my life. So at the age of around uh, 11, I think it was 11 or 12, I decided that I wanted to um, fly planes. Don't ask me why. I just got into this and I want to fly planes. I had no money. My parents had no money. I didn't have an uncle in PIA or the Air Force. Uh, I had no background in flying, but I just got it into my head. I wanted, I want to do some kind of flying. Now I will cut a long story short, but I found a way. I networked. I joined the air training corps. I found a way by six, by the age of 16, I was one of the youngest pilots in the UK and I was flying uh, glider planes because it's illegal to fly powered planes until you're 18. 
And then after I was 18, I converted to powered flying. And uh, by the grace of God, I was out there. I got a pilot's license. But the point is not to brag, but to say that, look, anything that you want to do in your life and you are focused enough and you are passionate enough that it hurts, you should be able to do it. You will be able to do it. Um, if I give another example, which is maybe a little bit more recent, is that I decided to do something for my health and fitness. All right. And uh, I decided that uh, I'm at that age of my life that I want to really pay attention to this. Uh, because, you know, when you get to my age, you suddenly realize that we are mortals and that one day it's all going to end. When you're young, you guys forget it. You're going to live forever. No problem. <laughs> so eat all the calories you want. Don't exercise, smoke, drink, all of this. It's fine because you're going to live forever, right? <laughs> well, let me tell you as an older person, now I'm, I'm going to, in three years time, I'm going to be 60. So I feel in myself, in my energy levels, in the way I feel, I still feel in my mid thirties. All right. By the grace of God, I feel I'm in my mid thirties in everything, in attitude and energy. And, but I wasn't looking my fit self. I was actually getting quite overweight. And so I actually was uh, at my peak. I was 105 kilos. And believe me, for that height, my height, it's not good. All right. I could see Dharthi opening her mouth, looking shocked. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes, exactly. I was 105 kilos. Now, I, I, I weigh myself every day now. And yesterday, I'm just looking at my monthly board there. Yesterday, I was 86.6. All right which means that I have uh, lost 18.4 kilograms, 18.4 kilos so far. Thank you. A few little thumbs up and round of applause. Thank you very much for that. Now, again, I want to tell you that a lot of us want to get fit. We want to get healthy, but do you want to do it badly enough? Are you willing to focus? Are you willing to do what it takes? Because I was, and part of my health and fitness regime was that I do high intensity interval training every day and I run, I, I use running. So you have to find what works for you. That's just a couple of tips. And I decided to target running a half marathon. I don't think I was fit enough to run a full marathon, but I said, right, Rahman, you're going to run half a marathon. But when I started, I couldn't run more than five minutes. I swear, couldn't run more than five minutes. But then through a series of training program within one year, I basically ran 21.1 kilometers nonstop. Uh, and I did it in about an hour and 20 minutes. So that's about 80 minutes. And uh, no, yeah, 80 minutes. And wow, what a sense of achievement that was for me. What a sense. Thank you. Thank you guys all and girls all for that clapping and thumbs up because really it means a lot to me. It means a lot because I won my race. I may have been one of the last people to finish the half marathon, but I only had a few rules when I started. Rule number one, when I start, I'm not going to stop running. I'm not going to walk. I decided I'm not going to walk. And number two, I don't care about my time. I just want to finish. So I wasn't competing against anyone because there were some Kenyans there. My goodness. They, they finished the whole race by the time I'd done the first kilometer. It was crazy. <laughs> they were, they were they're fast. Never race against a Kenyan. That's a, a golden rule to life. So they are fit people. <laughs> so I did the race. So I want you to understand uh, the principal rule I'm talking about here is that nothing is impossible. Now, I'm going to give you a resource after this session. I'm going to send you out an all an email with some resources. And one of them is going to be uh, an inspirational session I did in London last year. I believe it was around November last year to a thousand young people like you live on stage and it is called impossible is nothing and it's the story of my life it's a story of how i've used this rule to um, achieve things in my life and you can use the same rules from tomorrow so Dema, i'm going to send you that email which i hope that you can forward to everybody who's attending this session so they get benefit from this okay it's a it's about a 25 minute session you can watch it. You've got plenty of time nowadays, right? What are you going to do? Sit there and watch the wall? You might as well sit there and watch a motivation video. So I'm going to send that to you. Mahatma Gandhi said one of my favorite, favorite quotes on the whole area of change, and I'm sure that you are all aware of this, be the change that you want to see in the world. Be the change. 
And you know, that is so powerful. That for me is so powerful. Because what it does, it shifts the control and the blame completely to me. Because we in our lives are very used to saying, oh, it's not my fault. I haven't achieved this, it's not my fault. I didn't get the exam results I wanted. I didn't get into this university, it's not my fault. But by being the change, it shifts the responsibility onto you and your own ability to do that. I would recommend a book to you. Here's one of my resources. There is a book that changed my life. Make a note of this. It is co and it's the book you should read before reading any other personal development books. It's a really easy read. I did it within one week. You can finish the whole book. It is called The Slight Edge. T-H-E-S-L-I-G-H-T, -E The Slight Edge, E-D-G-E. -E. And it is by a guy called Jeff, J-E-F-F, -F, Olson, O-L-S-O-N. Okay, and again, I will include this. I will include this in um, the information that I give you. So uh, I've got a lot of, uh, uh, I think, first year students. I've got quite a few junior students of um, PDPU, uh, right? Now, have you had your ragging yet? <laughs> I understand there's a lot of ragging of, no, no, I see people shaking their heads. Actually, I've got to be careful of the humor I use because, you know, I'm in Saudi Arabia. So this guy behind me, he's ready. If I make any comedy, which is not uh, uh, above the line and it's not uh, halal comedy, you know, I'm going to be in for the chop. So I have to be careful. So with that in mind, please. Okay. So ragging, uh, I asked the committee actually, and I understand that at uh, PDPU, there is no ragging of students. Is that right? I can't believe that. Oh, wow. Everyone is nodding there. Now, is that just because your director is watching? <laughs> no, I'm really happy to hear that. Fantastic. I'm seeing lots and lots of uh, thumbs up and claps. So, wow. I, I, all my respect to you guys. That's amazing that you, uh, that you feel you make first year students very welcome. Um, I hear the canteen food is very popular at... Uh... <laughs> you see, now you stop smiling. Eh? That's it. Now nobody's smiling, you're shaking. The canteen, I understand, could do with a little bit uh, improvement. Uh, are, we, are we listening, Director Saab? Doctors, Dr. Saab, we uh, need to get some improvements in the canteen. But I understand that the main reason you go into the canteen is not because of the food, it is because of the television. <laughs> you go in because you want to watch the TV, especially when there's cricket on. Huh? <laughs> Uh, yes, 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 that's it. When the cricket is on, that's the main reason to go to the canteen. And the committee tell me that the noise level in the canteen is more than the stadium, especially when India and Pakistan are playing or India and Bangladesh, right? Oh my goodness, absolutely. Vaidik, you're a cricket fan, right? Oh God. You see, I'm not a huge cricket fan. I'm not a huge cricket fan. Um, and uh, But unfortunately, uh, you know, and I should be, embarrassed to call myself a Pakistani, you know, because all Pakistanis, Indians, Bangladeshis, they are absolute freaks about cricket. Uh, and I'm my wife, my wife, she's, she was a great cricket fan. And I found out, the day I found out was when I came home from work one day, my wife and my two kids, all of them, they were wearing green because Pakistan and, and India were playing. I swear, all three of them were standing on the sofa. <laughs> They weren't even sitting on the sofa. They're standing on the sofa, jumping up and down at every ball and um, screaming their heads off. I thought, my God, who have I married? Huh? This, this woman is crazy about cricket. And I said, darling, you don't order pizza. <laughs> I'm, watching, uh, I'm watching cricket. So I found out very, very early on that on any time when cricket is on, I have to order pizza. So that, was, that became my my normality so so we've got obviously we've got some great cricket fans here fantastic so now let's move on to the second part so are you happy so far just give me a quick thumbs up if you're happy so far with the way the thing is going i'm imparting knowledge with you i'm giving you resources well now oh, that's brilliant lots of hands up thank you so much and i I would appreciate if some more of you kind of decided to come onto the videos as well, but it's okay. I understand. You know, this is uh, COVID-19. 
and we're not looking our best. You have no idea how long it took me to look this good this morning. I got up and I looked like something the cat had dragged in from outside the house, you know? I thought, oh my God, I cannot go on screen looking like this. But, uh, you know, by the grace of God, uh, I cleaned up, I showered up and put on a tie. I, I even put on some aftershave. Can you believe it? <laughs> and then I'm thinking to myself, why the hell am I putting aftershave on? I'm going to be on Zoom. But look, can you smell me? I can screen can each other. There you go. I think some of you can smell me. There you go. <laughs> so let's now move on to the second topic. So if you remember, the second thing, oh, Suraj likes that one. <laughs> Suraj, are you wearing perfume today? Huh? Let me sniff you. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yes, you did. Yes, yes. You're wearing the Armani or the Gucci? Huh? Armani or Gucci? I wear Hugo Boss. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> so let's now uh, go on to uh, self-development. I'm going to share with you a few of my feelings on um, self-development. A lot of you actually said that you would like to uh, improve your communication skills. And I, I don't blame you. Communication skills are one of the biggest soft skills that is used as a currency in everything you do. Think about it when you do presentations, uh, when you do seminars like this that I'm doing. And hopefully, uh, I'm demonstrating to you some of the best practices all right, of communication. So the first thing I would say is work hard to improve your language skills. And you can see that I'm using uh, a lot of voice intonation. I'm speaking to you like I've got a passion for this subject. And hopefully you're getting that passion from my voice, right? And I am. I'm not acting. I love, this is one of the things that I am most passionate about in life, that when I'm uh, interacting, especially with young people, I want to be able to have an effect on your lives and your careers. It gives me a lot of satisfaction to do that. Now, I coach and mentor a lot of people within my company and also outside of my company. And the single biggest thing that I come across that stops people from becoming good communicators. Anybody have a think? Can you guess what that might be? All right. Lack of self-confidence, yeah. Lack of self-confidence. What I like to say, I call it negative self-speak. Negative self-speak. So I'll tell you an example. Uh, recently, I mean, I do a lot of MC work. Everybody knows what MC means? Master of Ceremonies. So I, I do large gatherings where in our company where I'm the master of ceremonies, I introduce the guests, rather like the role that Dema is doing very nicely today. So he was the master of ceremonies for this event today. All right. Now, <clears throat> I was training one uh, Saudi guy and a Saudi girl. They were both being trained by me for a couple of weeks before they were going to do a big function in front of the, one of the senior vice presidents of the, our company. Boy, were they nervous. They were both good, but they were nervous. So I, the first uh, thing that I had to do for them was to get rid of their nerves. Now, the girl, especially, she was saying, you know, Rahman, I know I have the skills, but on, on the day, I'm going to suck. I'm going to be terrible. I'm going to forget my lines. Oh, I'm going to be lack of, I'm going to forget what I'm going to say. And you know what I said to her? I said, you know what? You're right. And she looked at me and she was shocked. I said, yeah, if you tell yourself that you're going to fail, you're going to suck, you're going to forget your lines, you're going to be embarrassed, you're going to be this self-fulfilling prophecy. You're going to make yourself ba perform badly. And she said, okay, so what do I do? Because there's a saying that's, that says, whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. Yeah, you get that? So you're right in both situations. So what I had to get her to do was to convert her thinking into positive self-talk. And so I said to her, okay, every morning you get up <clears throat> and before you rehearsal, you're going to say these affirmations to yourself. I'm going to be amazing. I'm going to be terrific. I'm going to do the best job that this company has ever seen. I am the best. This is the kind of confidence you need to fill yourself with before doing any task in life. Thank you, Harsh, for that thumbs up. And you agree with me. Brilliant. And um, Daima as well. Everyone, I'm getting great thumbs up there. So because it's you, Parag, Rohit, thank you, Harsh, and uh, Karunal Mukund, 
Sanya, they're all agreeing with me, brilliant, and Viral, and uh, Harsh again. That's brilliant, because, and here's the thing, let me give an example of this morning, when I was waiting to do this session here. I closed my eyes, I did a little bit of medication, med medication, no, meditation. I don't take medication, honestly. Meditation with a T. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna, I got this. We're gonna be cool. And what's the first message I sent to you this morning, Daima? Can you remember? It was, are you ready to rock? Yeah, are you ready to rock? It's about attitude. Have you got the attitude that makes you rock? Or are you gonna go in thinking, oh my God, oh my God, I got a hundred people watching me. I got a hundred people coming online and I'm not gonna be able to do a good job. No, to hell with that. Be confident and focused. If you know the audience uh, and their expectations, what are the three golden rules of presentations I told you earlier? Preparation, preparation, and you got it, Darthi, preparation. Right, and Vedic, I got you there. Because it's all in how prepared you are to run a session. And I did a lot of preparation here for this session here today. So let me go on to the second topic on self-development. Uh, that when I'm doing this presentation, I, I'm, as you can see, I'm not working off a script. I don't use a script. So sometimes I see people trying to do presentations and reading word for word off a script, like a PowerPoint presentation. And they're looking at the notes and they're going, um, uh, this is my presentation and I am going to be talking to you today about, see what's happened there. I lose eye contact with you. I lose focus and I'm sounding like a robot. And I think when I looked at the Google form, there was one person who says, I hope sir is not monotonous because I'm going to turn off after the first minute. So whoever that was who made that comment, I hope you're still with us and I'm not being monotonous. But build a framework. I've got a framework of what I want to talk to you about today. And I'm going from point to point, but I'm using my own language skills, okay? The other thing is, try to be yourself during presentations. Now, what do I mean by this? A lot of people, in real life, they're lively, they're bright, they're communicative, they talk nicely, but as soon as you put them in front of an audience, they turn into a robot. Hello, my name is Dati, and I am talking to you today about reservoir management. <clears throat> my first point will, no, be yourself. Don't be frightened. And I'm sure that you're great. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm picking on you because you're very much animated and Nihar is also smiling and Vedic is giving me lots of positive energy and I'm getting this from you. So be yourself during the presentation. The next tip I can give you, now you see on the subject of presentations, I could keep going on forever, but I'm trying to cover just the top line information. I'd be happy to do a, a follow on session where we talk more deeply, we do a more deep dive into this. Now, don't aim for perfection. Please, failure is part of the journey. Now, today, I'm not afraid of saying a few things wrong uh, in front of you. It's part of life. Failure is part of learning. So if I say medication instead of meditation, so what? You just move along and you make a joke out of it because we are all human. So don't aim for perfection. Failure really is part of the journey. And I would say, get as much stage time as possible. If you want to be a presenter, if you want to be good at communications, please do not re refuse any opportunity. Pranav agrees with me, Hajariwala, um, absolutely. Don't waste any opportunities to get stage time. So if someone says, look, um, uh, Nihar, we are doing a, a presentation to the vice president next week. Uh, would you like to do it? Can you come on and do this presentation? You say, absolutely, I'd love to. Don't be frightened because even if you mess up, it's a learning opportunity for you. Every failure is a learning opportunity. It's not a failure, okay? Um, now, what I'm, what I'm gonna go to now is that uh, I, I finished the self-development part because I've been a self-developer for most of my life. I mean, I'm in my mid fifties now, mid to late fifties. I am never gonna stop developing myself. And part of developing myself, I spoke earlier about how I got my health and fitness back on track. It's all about goal setting, right? Goal setting, a lot of people did ask, how can I stay focused? How can I set my goals and do them? Now, you all, all have heard of the acronym SMART when it comes to goal setting. S-M-A-R-T. 
setting smart goals. Yep, I can see thumbs up happening there. I can see a few people smiling. Yeah. Now the question I have for you though is how many of us, how many of us actually use the smart principle when we are setting our goals, right? So let me give an example. Uh, how did I use smart within my health and fitness and weight loss exercise journey? Let's do the first one, S, specific, right? Specific, I said that I want to get down to 75 kilograms. That's my target weight. I was 105, oh my God. So how much did I have to lose? Quick maths from engineers, 30 kilograms, right? Setting kilograms. And yes, I'm getting a, a comment from Deep saying that setting the goal is more important or setting right process is more important. That's a great question. Um, I'll come on to that in a second because you cannot get the right process until you have got the goals in sequence and then the process becomes more natural after that. It becomes more of a natural progression. But if you haven't got the first step right, ha haven't got that first step right, you're not going to be able to do it. Okay. Now, specific, I want to lose 30 kilos. So uh, next M. M is measurable. Now, weight is very measurable. In fact, I measure a lot of things. I, I measure weight. I measure uh, total body fat. I measure the... Uh, I work out the BMI, the, the body mass index, and I have a running total. So I, I weigh every day. Now, I know, for example, that my weight was uh, 86.6 yesterday. So I know that I have hit 61.3% of my target. How measurable can you get? 61%, 61.3 because I've lost 18.4 kilos. And I know exactly how much I've got more to do. I can almost draw a linear graph on that and how I'm doing. And my target is to get down to my target weight by the end of this year, God willing, end of this year. Maybe I'll run another half marathon. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. I'll report to you if I do. But A, what is the A? It's achievable, right? Achievable. Good. Now, I have to decide, is it achievable? Well, there was a stage in my life where I didn't think that was very achievable. I used to be afraid of the target. But when I broke it down into small pieces, and, and worked it out weekly, monthly, and everything, I thought, no, this is achievable. Is R is realistic, and sometimes people say relevant. And yes, it was realistic for me, and it was extremely relevant for me because I want to live longer. And then you link that to your passions. You have to understand the reason why, and that's a whole different talk. Because once you understand the reason why you wanna do it, you will do something a lot more successfully than just, I wanna lose weight. And so my, my um, uh, mentor, by the way, I use a lot of mentors for what I do. I've, I don't believe in getting good at anything. Is my tie straight? Oh, just checking. I'm, I don't want to be uh, doing anything by myself. So I got a fit, health and fitness uh, expert to help me. And he asked me, why do, you wanna, why do you want to lose weight? I said, well, you know, I'd like to look even better than I do now. He said, but why? Why do you want to look better? Actually, uh, you know what? I, I want to feel better. He said, why do you want to feel better? Well, I'd like to live longer. It's okay. Why do you want to live longer? I said, well, I want to be around for my family and play football with my grandkids. By the way, I recently had my first grandkid. It was amazing. My daughter had a, a son. In fact, this Tuesday, this Tuesday, he's going to be one year old. He's little Yusuf. He lives in London with my daughter. So that's amazing. Thank you for the thumbs up. <laughs> but uh, that's something I'm very proud of, my first grandkid. Now, so he's part of my plan. My plan is to not only play football with Yusuf, but to attend his wedding. And he's only one year old. So I want to live long enough to do that because my father attended this, the wedding of one of his grandkids. That's amazing, right? Um, and so, and then my instructor said, well, why? Why do you want to attend the wedding? And why do you want to play football? So because I love my family. He says, there you go. That's the one. That's the answer that I was looking for. So. When I put my trainers on every day, I exercise every day. I do high intensity interval training every single day, even while I'm fasting. Just before I break my fast, I do the training. In fact, I will include this in the resources. I will send you one of my workouts. Would you like that? Yeah, Suraj, I thought you would. Look at that, nodding really fast. And uh, Vedic, good. Now, in the email that I send uh, uh, Daima, I will include the actual workout that I do and it's so simple. You don't need any equipment. You don't need to go to the gym. You just put on your shorts and a t-shirt. You get an exercise mat and you put on YouTube. My, my, all my exercises are on YouTube. 
and I, go, I know some amazing sessions. And so I will send you those. And that's what I've used to lose my weight and along with uh, running. So running is a great sport if your knees can take it, okay? What's next? We've done the R, T, time bound. Absolutely. We use this whole principle to say, when do I want to do it by? And I know that I want to lose maximum one to two kilos a month. A lot of us spend 20, 30 years putting on weight, but we want to take it off in three days, right? We want to take it off in three weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, be patient. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. If you spend so much time putting it on, you got to be patient and so give it a one or two kilos a month is a good time. To do. Now, during the pandemic, what a great opportunity. What a great opportunity to devote some time to your exercise and also to your personal development and to spend time doing that. And there are so many resources out there, ladies and gentlemen, so many resources that are available to you that um, bring in all this, uh, all this stuff happening. And uh, how many people complain, I don't have time for the gym. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. We all complain, don't we? And so what we have to understand is that are you a glass half full person or are you a glass half empty person? We saw with the curve that there's this denial and there's all this going on. Right, great. Want to be a positive person? This period, this pandemic could be a fantastic opportunity for you to do so many things that you uh, want to do in your life. Now, there's a couple of things I've done. Let's get a little bit of humor back on and let me just dab the sweat. There you go. It's getting a bit hot in here under all these lights. Um, during this pandemic, I decided that I want to start cooking. And I, who's, who's uh, not a cook, but has decided to learn a few things, right? So absolutely, I can see lots of people have learned to cook. Now, what I did was I really missed that my um, some uh, pakora. And I think in India, you call it uh, bhajia, right? I, I wanted to make the pakora. Now, one thing I didn't share with you when we were looking at resilience was that I had a little bit of a sad, uh, tragic part of my life. Um, at the beginning of uh, 2018, which is a couple of years ago now, that um, actually my, my son, my eldest son, got married at the back end of December. And we were in Pakistan. And unfortunately, my, my wife, uh, Shafia, who I'd been married to for 28 years, and uh, you know, she was my best friend. She got taken ill. And um, on the last day of the wedding, we got, um, she got taken ill and we went to Lahore. Unfortunately, she got taken to intensive care and uh, she passed away. Uh, on the 5th of January, 2018. And that was probably one of the lowest points of my life. One of the lowest points of my life that I can possibly think of. And I uh, pride myself on being an extremely positive person. And this was one of my biggest tests of my life. I decided that in honor of my wife, I was gonna stay connected to life. And instead of going into depression, um, I was gonna make my late wife and my children proud of me and that to become a better version of myself, even a, a better, brighter, fitter, healthier version. And I know that we're going to meet one day when I go upstairs myself, but I wanted to show the world and myself that I wasn't going to get drowned in, in, uh, in the sorrow of the situation. So I stayed positive and um, the outcome, the positive outcome that I can tell you from this is that I helped coach a lot of other people who've been through similar grief. And, I, um, and five months ago, I met someone who was stupid enough to say yes to my proposal, and she wants to spend the rest of her life with me, so I got married again. And there you go, I've got a ring on my finger again. So uh, December last year, I got married, and I have inherited three more beautiful young children through her previous marriage. She'd lost her husband. And I thought, yeah, let's, let's do this. So, you know, the, the story there is that if you stay positive and even through the most tragic circumstances, you can uh, come out on top. And I talk about this a little bit more in the, in the talk that uh, I'm gonna send you. But um, back to the comedy, because this guy is sitting behind me and I have to be very, very careful. Um, I was talking to the committee and I noticed that you guys wanted a bit of comedy. And I said, look, Tell me something exciting that's going to happen in India uh, for the next few weeks or months. And they all thought hard, right? I'm looking at their faces. 
thinking, tell me something like really big that's going to happen in India. And he goes, sir, it's going to rain. <laughs> really? That's the most exciting thing that's going to happen in India? I says, yes, sir, it's going to rain. But I said, well, how is that exciting? So it's going to rain for four months. <laughs> so I, I, I did a bit of Googling and I understand that in early June, uh, you are expecting the monsoon season. So, and it lasts until what? Um, Mid-September. So that's June, July, August. That's almost three and a half months of rain. And so obviously the, uh, the University of Dhaka people are saying, so what? We get it 12 months of the year. This is crazy. They're, they're always underwater. They, they, go to, they go to work in their boats. They, uh, I think, I fear. But they're so used to this kind of being waterlogged. But if that's the most exciting thing that's happening to you in your life, then good luck to you guys. By the way, I, I am slipping in a little bit of um, Urdu and uh, Punjabi and, and Hindi and stuff that in this talk. I hope that you're all getting it. Um, Urdu is quite similar to Hindi. Uh, I think most people who know Hindi will, will get Urdu. I know that there are differences in the words. I think you say Dhanyavad and Urdu people say Shukriya. There are a few basic words, obviously. Um, but I'm an Urdu speaker, um, but I grew up as a Punjabi. My mother tongue is Punjabi. And of course, you guys know the difference, right? Between Urdu and Punjabi. It's very, very stark. Um, Urdu is the language of love. It's the romantic language, you know? You, you see all the romantic uh, Bollywood old movies. If you want to tell a girl that you love her, you must do it in Urdu or Hindi, you know? This typical Bollywood. Man, mujhe aap se hai. Right? That you feel. You feel love. But you try to do it in Punjabi. Punjabi is a very angry language. Most Punjabi sentences start with the word, Oye! You look really angry. And trying to tell a girl you love her, Oye! She's going to run away. She said, what the, what the hell? <laughs> it's not the language of love. But very similarly, anger. Oh my goodness. If you want to express anger, don't try it in Hindi, please. It doesn't work, right? Punjabi. You, you see the anger in the face. Absolute anger. There's no ambiguity. That guy's angry. Hindi. Okay? It's too polite. Way too polite. <laughs> you want to do it in Punjabi. So um, luckily, my, uh, my late wife and my current wife, they both speak Urdu and Punjabi. So I know exactly what to do. When I'm trying to be nice and everything is always uh, Urdu. But when, um, when I'm talking about anything which I need to really express my opinion, it's going to be Punjabi. So that's just a little bit of a language. And well, you wanted communication tips. You're getting communication tips that you didn't even bargain for. All right. So I'm going to, uh, I'm getting probably close to uh, the end of what I want to say to you. But I want to, in a moment, move into a little bit of a question and answer session. And which, which you can, uh, anybody who wants to ask me a question in a few minutes will be able to unmute their mics and ask me a question. But before I do that, I'm just going to do a very, very quick uh, wrap up. So just to summarize very, very quickly, after the introduction, when I, I talked to the audience, I found out what the audience was, I, I did two sections for you today, right? We did one section on motivation. And I, I, I summarized that people uh, of times and of struggle is a very, very great time, if you're a positive person, to get tougher. And of course, the... Uh, the title of this session. Oh, we've still got people joining us. Amazing. Maybe they just rolled out of bed a bit late. <laughs> They've missed a great session. So let's see. Um, time to struggle are a great opportunity for you if you're a positive person. You can use this time either to be depressed and lonely and frustrated and tired, or you can connect with people. Now, Harvard University did a study, and you can Google this later. Harvard University did a study on human happiness. And they followed a, a sample set of their students up to 20 or 30 years after they graduated. And they tried to find the ones which had made the success of their life. And they were generally content and happy. And you know what the number one rule that they found for those people that were happy? They had very, very satisfying personal relationships. They're good personal networks. So a good area for you to work on if you are interested in being happy 10 years down the line 20 years down the line is to maintain good relationships now i mean by this not just your teachers 
there are uh, basically in your uh, personal life also, your parents, uh, your brothers and sisters. And uh, I've got a great question here from Nihal. So uh, she's saying that in typical times, and if there are, is an extension in time, how can we keep patience during this phase? Wow, that's a great question. Let me get to that in the question and answer phase when I'm doing that. So let me just also summarize that I also said in the motivation side that find your passion. Find something you're passionate about. And believe me, once you find, I come into work every day looking forward to my day's work because I have a passion about doing this kind of stuff. And I do this in Saudi Aramco. I coach a lot of our professional development uh, program graduates, undergraduates, and training scheme people. And it's amazing, amazing uh, satisfaction for me. And I have three and a half more month, years, not months, I have three and a half more years to work before retirement. And I'm loving every minute. So find your passion. We did a second section on self-development. I told you to read The Slight Edge, which is the book. And the pandemic, is, again, is a great opportunity to improve your skill set. And we focused. Uh, focus is a great key. And also we discussed the SMART goals. All right. Um, with that, what I'm going to do is quickly do a few thank yous. And then we're going to go into the FAQ. I would like to very much thank, first of all, you, the audience, for sticking with me through this uh, session. It's been a pleasure to have you with me. Um, I would like you all to get your phones out right this very minute. Some of you are already talking on your phones. That's great. So if you can get your phone out, can you please go to Instagram and follow me? Because I'd love to be in touch with you because I'd love to keep on inspiring you. My handle is very, very simple. It's at hello Rahman. So if you haven't already followed me, please just follow me at hello Rahman, H-E-L-L-O, no space, no underscore, Rahman, R-E-H-M-A-N. And after this session, it would be fantastic if you can send the organizers some feedback. I would love to hear what you thought of the session. I will send you the resources. And um, I'm going to now also in a minute announce who I'm going to give these books to. You know what? I feel that uh, Dharti Patel has been extremely engaged throughout the session. And I've been seeing that she's followed every single thing I say, and I can see that she's fully engaged. So Dharti, I want to thank you for your engagement level. And you are the award winner of uh, one of the copies of my book. I'm going to sign it personally for you. And uh, I wish you all the very best. I co-authored this book. So the first chapter is written by me. I wrote the whole chapter on one flight from Bahrain to London. <laughs> yes. So you will enjoy it in hopefully. Okay. So that's uh, the second winner. And so the first winner is our hero. Remember him? So he's going to get the first book. And the third one I will announce in a little while before the end of the session. Um, the organizing committee. I have to thank the guys. Uh, Harsh Patel, the president of SEG. Mohit Patel, the vice president. Uh, Viral Patel the secretary of SEG, all Patels, Jindal Patel, they're keeping in the family, so, <laughs> secretary of SPG. Then we've got um, uh, Yashpal Sinha Daima, he's been our host today, wonderful, he's in charge of logistics. Suraj Chauhan, head of public relations, Kaushal Dudat, head of uh, documentation team. Asir Vora, who's the head of graphic designing, he made me so look so good on the posters. Thank you, thank you, Asir. I, I didn't realize I looked that good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to print them and put them on my bedroom wall. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Parag uh, Bharania, uh, the documentation officer. We've got Pranav uh, Hajariwala, the logistics officer. And Dev Amin, social media handler. And of course, all the subcommittee members and the SEG, SPG, EAG, PDPU student chapters. Uh, you have been awesome partners to work with. You helped me so much in the preparation for this. Um, but I, I can't thank you enough, really. And of course, uh, Dr. R.K. Vidge, uh, I want to definitely thank you as the most senior person in this call uh, for the, your thanks. I want to thank all the faculty members. My message to the faculty members and my message to the graduates who are now engineers and everything, uh, please pay it back. You have had great luck in your life. You've made it. You've graduated. Please mentor the younger students. Give back to society, give back to the students, 
be very free and open with your time because that's the way you earn a lot of respect. And also, you know, you respect the fact that you got the chances that all of these young faces on the screen want. Now, I think we'll move to the uh, question and answer session. I can see some uh, question uh, already coming through. I've got from Harsh actually. Sir, being a stand-up comedian requires good timing for punchlines. Pretty hilarious stuff too at times while being in a, a corporate world in Saudi Aramco, you need to be patient and calm and good attitude. How could you manage between the two different identities of yourself? Wow. Well, I'm, I'm a schizophrenic. That's how I manage my personalities. <laughs> no, um, you're right. There are many, many different aspects of my life. I am all things to all people. So first and foremost, I am uh, an employee of Saudi Aramco. And we started by uh, saying that it was, you know, it is one of the biggest, it is. It is the biggest company in the world by market capitalization. We're bigger than Google and Apple combined. So that kind of gives you the idea of our size. And we are the most profitable company in the history of companies. So um, in that sense, of course, like a lot of companies at the moment where, you know, it's, it's a difficult time for everyone, but we have shown a lot of resilience as a company and hopefully we're gonna survive. Um, I'm getting a lot of questions from people who um, who are uh, okay? Deep Shar, uh, he wants to be muted. All right, look, I'm gonna unmute. Un 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 I'm gonna mute all, but I'm going to right. I've muted everyone, but now I've given you permission to unmute. But look, there are uh, quite a lot of people on the call. So if you could raise your hand, there's a button which should say raise your hand, and I will know that you want to talk. Just underneath the participants list you'll see a button which says, raise your hand. If you want to talk, you want to say something, I will come to you eventually, okay? So, and then I will, un uh, then I'll say unmute. That way we can manage it a little bit better, right? Um, a lot of people are asking, I, I got the hands there, thank you, and I will come to you. Um, a lot of people are asking, how do I get a job in Saudi Aramco? Now I do work for human resources, but I'm not in a hiring and firing position, but I will send in the resources, the recruitment website of Saudi Aramco, okay? In there, it has all the uh, current available job requisitions which are open. And the only way to apply, the only way to apply is via our portal. You upload your CV on the portal against any job which you think you're qualified for. The one thing I would say, unfortunately, is that the company, when it's hiring uh, fresh graduates, like people who are straight out of university, it only takes Saudi nationals, fresh graduates. So any expatriates, any other country in the world, apart from Saudi Arabia, even like Western countries, everyone, they must show a minimum level of experience, which will be shown on the thing. So if you have, if you aspire to join Saudi Aramco, absolutely impossible is nothing, right? So even for me, it seemed impossible at the beginning, but I've been working in this company for almost 20 years now. So it's been an amazing ride. So what you've got to do, is get the experience first, whether in India or whether you go out, get the experience and then sell your experience. We do hire petrochemical engineers. We do hire chemical engineers, so that's good news, okay? Now, without any further ado, let me go to a few questions. So I've got uh, Deep. Um, okay, so Deep, please, I've unmuted you, or you can mute, unmute yourself. Please fire away with your question. I'll do my best to answer it. Deep, over to you. It was a great session. I really enjoyed. First of Thank all, you. condolences to all uh, flight incidents in Karachi, which we heard. So I'm really sorry, and we are, the world is with you. Thank you. Uh, coming uh, coming to my question, question is that goal setting has always had very importance in the life, but the most important parameter while we're reaching to the goal is the process, because that is something which we are day day to day involved in it. So how to make sure that we get away with the distractions and get into that zone for a longer period of time. Mm. Right? So this is what I, because this question will, is going to be a bit elaborated and will cover everything. So if you can answer it. Okay. That's a great question, Deep. Very, very good. Because I covered how to um, actually uh, do the strategy part, which was how to set the targets. But then the process is something completely different, as you say. And one of the things you mentioned was, how do you stay away from distractions? Now, um, in the book that I've written, one of the key seven elements that I give is that you have to have deep focus. Now, focus, if you look at the letters, 
it, you can even say that it stands for focus on one course of action until successful, right? You can make that acronym. So that says, says it all as far as I'm concerned, because in today's world, we do have so many distractions, right? We have uh, internet in front of us. We have social media. And I even find myself very distracted. So I totally get your question, Deep. And it's something, one other thing I would say is work with mentors to make sure you stay on track with the process. I currently have approximately 10 mentors in my life. Some of them are older than me and more experienced. Some of them are younger than me. One of my mentors is my 14 year old son. He's my mentor, okay? Yeah. Not my mentee. I know that he knows technology and how to do things on social media better than I do. <laughs> So I will not, yeah, so deep, I will not, yeah, I will struggle for one hour, two hours trying to do something on Instagram. He said, dad, come on, give it, give me your phone. You're such a dinosaur. <laughs> and he does it in like a few seconds. Um, so one of my answers would be that get mentorship. This is one of the biggest uh, secrets of becoming successful. Don't try to do the whole process yourself. One of my other mentors um, is someone who, uh, his name is John Corey. Now, maybe you haven't heard of the name John Corey. He's an American guy, but you may have heard of the name of his uh, ex-boss. Anybody heard of Steve Jobs? Yes. Ah, yes. Right. So Steve um, Jobs was the head of Apple and John Corey used to work directly under Steve Jobs. And I hunted him out through networking that I did. And John, for quite a long time, for over a year, was my mentor and every Friday we would get online on Zoom and John brought a lot of different thinking to my life and helped me with a lot of areas that I wanted to develop myself. So is get he, mentored. Is he same as Jonathan Eve? Is Jonathan no. Eve you're talking about? No, no, no. Okay. No, this is a different person and he lives in London and whenever I do go to London, I go to London a few times a year, obviously to meet my kids and everyone. Um, uh, but I've, obviously at the moment I'm not traveling much but my daughter uh, lives in London with my son because my son, my 14 year old son recently went to uh, London to continue his studies. So he's living there now. Yeah. Uh, I've got a question from uh, Vaidik. So he's saying that, sir, in my opinion, sometimes instead of success, satisfaction is the most precious way to get happiness. What's your opinion about it? Oh, wow. That's a very deep question. And Vaidik, I have to say, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. Because I have a YouTube channel called Make Happy Memories. And I made a speech six weeks after my wife passed away. I made a speech to our community here in Saudi Aramco in Dharan. And the title of my speech was Make Happy Memories. And that was my advice to young people. Life honestly is not about owning Ferraris and Mercedes, having lots of money in the bank. It's about making happy memories. And I'm happy to say that my wife and I and my kids, we made 28 years of happy memories. And that's what helped me survive her passing away. Um, and so I really love your question. And so making happy memories, I feel is the way to happiness, not from owning things. I've got a question also from uh, Shubham Sinha. Uh, Singh, sorry, Shubham Singh, um, and you're saying, sir, basically losing the weight and fitness, we must enjoy our journey from fat to fit. That's the main perspective. I couldn't agree with you more because if you said to me, go start lifting weights or uh, do uh, intermittent fasting, all this, I'm going to lose, I'm going to do it for one week and I'm going to get off track. You must choose something you enjoy. So if you enjoy uh, gym classes, in, if you enjoy rumba classes, I enjoy running. I love running because even if I'm on a business trip, even if I'm on vacation, all I do, put on my trainers, get out and run. Don't need any equipment. I do it by myself. So I love that question. So thank you, uh, Shubham Singh, for that. Um, I've got a question, another question for him. Basically, is, no, no, that's, that's the same question again. He wanted to make sure I got it. Now, uh, Dawal Shah is asking, is it better for mechanical engineers to pursue petroleum engineering as a postgraduate? Good question. Look at what's in the market. Look at what's out there in the market at the time. Do your research. I'm a mechanical engineer. My degree, as uh, Dema said at the beginning, was mechanical engineering. Now, 
it's a different uh, subject that my last day as a mechanical engineer was my last exam at university. I put the full stop on my paper. I thought, right, I'm no longer a mechanical engineer. I want to go do what I'm passionate. <laughs> Dad, I did it. Here's my degree. Now, now let me go do what I want to be passionate about. But um, I will basically, yeah, let me, Shubham, you want to be unmuted. So I think, uh, Shubham, you should be able to uh, unmute yourself. So go to your bottom left-hand side of your screen, Shubham, and you should be able to unmute yourself, and you can talk to me. So okay. yeah. Hello. I got Rohit there, but uh, Shubham, please go ahead. Okay. May I go? May I go ahead? Okay. Who's that? Yeah, yeah. You got it. I can see you. I can hear you. Go ahead. Nice earphones. <laughs> so my first, so my question is about that. You have also inspired the me of students in this seminar about that your fitness level and you have how you um, kind of how you decrease your weight and from seventy to or something. I didn't understand how of the speech I have forward to see. So my, have you enjoyed a little? Have you have totally give your hundred percent efforts and hundred percent ounce to uh, overcome your fit, overcome your fatness to fitness? Because that's the journey. Because we have don't want to jump to the directly to the result. We want hundred percent personality. A single hundred percent may make effort to have a positive result. That's my. That's a good question because I tell you why. Some people get focused on the goal, and when they don't, when they're doing all the process, they go to the gym, they're running and doing everything. Let's say in one month they don't really lose it or weight, huh? The people uh, get depressed. Oh my God, I did all that exercise, it didn't work. I have failed many times. Let yes. me tell you, I have failed so many times. But one thing I can tell you, I never stopped trying. You have to find that way that works, right? Now, um, you look like a very nice, slim, smart, fit guy, but you have, to, uh, you have to understand that being slim is not the same as being fit, because fitness comes, it's a combination of strength, stamina, and agility. And there are different ways of uh, measuring all three of those things, and even flexibility. So you could do yoga for flexibility. You could do long distance running for stamina or cardio training, strength, you could do some weight training, and flexibility, you know, you get the picture. Now, I have always been an active person. So in my younger years, there is not a sport that I haven't tried. I've done everything from mountain climbing to water skiing, and I've even done a few parachute jumps, um, football, you name it, I used to play tennis. Even, it's only when you come to a certain point in your life that you start getting a bit lazy and your focus goes because you are, have got family, uh, you know, things to family responsibilities and you start losing focus on that. But let me tell you, uh, the advice I would give you, treat it like money in the bank. If as youngsters, you put small amounts of money in the bank, in 20 to 30 years time, that money will grow a lot to a lot more, right? It's exactly the same with your health, exactly the same. If you can give up smoking, if you can give up habits, if you can go to the gym. I, I, I uh, used to have a friend who told me, Rahman, I find it really easy to give up smoking. I said, how do you mean? He goes, I do it. I give up smoking 20 times every day. It's so easy. <laughs> so it's, that's not what I mean. I mean, give up and then stay giving up. All right. So you really, and as you said very, very well, uh, Shabham, that you've got to enjoy the journey. Find a sport you enjoy. And for me, it was running. Yeah. And so one thing, sir, one thing I would, uh, want, also want to add about that. So while uh, bothering on the result, we must enjoy our journey that what we are worth to doing that. So because the result will come. Because the result today will be there, but it will be lost in any way, in any case. But your journey will not be lost. That's exactly. Ab absolutely right. I couldn't agree with you more. That's a very, very good point. That Thank you. Anything you learn, even when you're struggling, you're not failing. Don't equate struggling with failing all right um <laughs> deep is asking what will i have to do to get your signed copy of your book mm, you have to do something very special to get the last the final signed copy i'll see i'll see what i can do but deep the the it's available on amazon i will send you a link on the document but we'll uh, we'll do something for you we'll see maybe you can buy one you can send it to me i'll sign i'll sign it or maybe i'll just give it to you who knows um adruv Dhruva Pani is saying, sir, how to narrow down your path to find your passion? And would you be happy if you share the top five lessons you learned from the mentors you mentioned? Mm. 
you know what, in the uh, context of the time that I currently have, because I know that uh, our time is going on and I want to try to finish the session you know, within the next, let's say, 10, 15 minutes. Um, maybe I can't tell you all the mentors, but we can do that in another session perhaps. But mentors, because they help me in so many different fields, it's hard to summarize all of them. But I would say how to narrow down your path to your passions is a lifelong journey, which is a very, very enjoyable journey. You've got to become very self-aware of who you are as a person. What are your likes? What are your dislikes? What gives you the most satisfaction in life? And then once you've got that narrowed down, I guarantee you, you'll find what you're passionate about. It's, um, it's, there's no one size fits all. It's not easy to give a black and white answer to a question like that because finding your passion takes a while sometimes. I didn't really know who I was until my, I would say my mid thirties, okay? Um, I knew that at university, I was the president of the Indian society at university. By that, I mean Indian subcontinent. So we had members from um, you know, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka. That's how I learned all the long Sri Lankan names because I was a president. I had to know how to say the names. And so um, I knew that communication was a field that I found passionate. But then later on, what I added to that was I liked humor. And I did my, you know how old I was when I did my very first stand-up comedy? I was 11 years old. And I did it, I got up on stage because I was being bullied by a lot of guys in, in London. So I got up in front of 300 people and I did stand-up comedy and I won the competition, I came first. <laughs> so that was my uh, ordeal by fire, my introduction to stand-up comedy at the age of 11. So that's why I can say that I've had a 40-year career and I've worked, I've been very, very blessed to work all over the world. I've worked with people like Russell Peters. Anybody know Russell Peters? You're gonna get hurt real bad. So I've, I've shared the stage a few times with Russell Peters um, and quite a few other um, amazing comedians. I've been very lucky. And I performed comedy all over the world, not here, just here in Saudi Arabia, but um, in the UK, where else? Kenya, I've been to perform in Kenya, in Bahrain, all over the Gulf. So Kuwait, um, Oman, Dubai. I performed comedy in Dubai. Uh, so it's been an amazing, amazing thing. Um, so yeah, I've got a few more questions coming in. Um, now, I have a very good question here from Daima. Sir, what is the reason behind the smile and positivity that we are looking straight forward from Saudi Arabia to the session today? Just one reason. One reason why there's always a smile on my face is because God has been so kind to me. I am, I have, I am an ordinary person. I want you to understand I am nothing special. I'm an ordinary person who has, by the grace of God, been allowed to live an extraordinary life. I've had amazing opportunities in my life. And this is why I stay positive. Because by staying positive, I, there's an expression I really uh, aspire to in my life is, positive people attract positive results. Positive people attract positive people into their life. And uh, everyone wants to help someone who is positive. You go to buy a car and you go to the salesman. Hi, how's sales going this week or this month? If he says, oh, it's been a really bad month. Oh my God, I haven't sold a single car. Will you buy from that salesman? Now, you go to another salesman, he's up, he's positive, and you say, how's, how are the sales this month for your car showroom? Fantastic, I've had my best month ever. I'm really doing great, I'm feeling so positive. Will you buy from that salesman? So you, in effect, are branding yourself all the time, okay? You are all the time branding yourself as either, a, you think back to your university, think to your university life right now. You, and, and think about your circle of friends. I'm sure you can think of how people are branding them, themselves already. Do you have one who is the nerdy one, huh? who always likes studying, who always gets his coursework in on time, never like, yeah, you got the nerdy one, right? You know the funny one, right? The one that's always the joker of the pack. You know that he or she is always gonna come up with something funny. You got the angry guy, huh? who's always frustrated and angry and negative. You've got people like that all over the place. So in a sense, you are branding yourself and you will carry that identity with you wherever you go in your life. So if you're a negative, depressed, frustrated person at university, when you go to work, you're going to find yourself in a similar boat. So please try to brand yourself in a positive way because that becomes your professional identity 
for your colleagues who are joining you, okay? Um, yeah, I've got a couple of people here uh, saying uh, condolences and things about the plane crash um, in Karachi yesterday. I want to thank you on behalf of all people uh, in Pakistan. Oh, we were standing to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, it's, yes, a, it, it's a real shock, absolute shock. It happened at a very, very um, bad time. In fact, uh, I, sorry, did anyone want to speak there? Okay. Um, I was just going to say that um, I told you about getting married. My marriage was in Karachi, uh, in the city where um, that uh, plane crash took place. And it's very hard. Uh, you know, my, my new wife is from Karachi. And uh, it coming just a couple of days before Eid and during the month of Ramadan, and there were some pretty prominent people on that plane. Um, but it's always sad, always sad when you hear about these incidences, you know. Um, and so that's part of the thing of being brothers and sisters. I consider all of you, whether you are from India, from Pakistan, or from Bangladesh, or wherever, you are like little brothers and sisters to me. All right. And I thank you very much. It's all about humanity, sir. It's all about humanity, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, um, you know, it's a terrible thing for the families that are having to go through this. It's a very, very uh, bad situation. Um, for a refreshing mood, which comedian you prefer to watch from India? Oh, gosh. Kapil Sharma. Yeah, yeah. Kapil Sharma came to my mind because he's, I love his delivery. Now, I like watching global comedians. I watch a comedian from anywhere because I love studying the delivery. Yeah, yeah. Huh? <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe then. I, I, you know, you have to send me suggestions. Maybe you have to send me suggestions. So on that, maybe I will send you some of um, my comedy performances. How about that? Would you like that? And uh, they're they're linked on YouTube, and you can you can compare me to Kapil Sharma if you like. I'm nowhere near those guys, but uh, hopefully you'll find it funny. But I'll I'll share a few videos with you, so you can enjoy those as well. Although all you have to do is Google me, or go to YouTube, uh, put in my name with the correct spelling, and then. Um, yeah, uh, Deep is very happy with that, about that. <laughs> so I'm going to send you definitely. Kapil Sharma, yeah, a few of them. People uh, like Kapil as well. I'm getting those in the comment box. Brilliant. So with that, look, um, I think that uh, the, the session is slowly drawing to an end. I want to make sure that the last okay. people who are left on have enjoyed this. Um, and maybe I can hand, if there are no more questions, I can hand back to uh, uh, Daima. And uh, is, is Dr... Um, Arkevich still on the call, or maybe he had to leave for a meeting or something, or maybe yeah, can close it. Yeah. Yes, sir has uh, um end meeting at eleven, oh. so sir left. No problem. No problem. My YouTube channel. Um, I will send you the YouTube channel. Um, if you just put in Rahman Akhtar, you'll find a YouTube channel which is Rahman One Two Three. It's got a lot of my comedy videos there. Rahman One Two Three is the the YouTube channel there. But I'll send it to you in a link, or just put my name. Uh, but make sure you spell it correctly, Rahman Akhtar, R-E-H-M-A-N, Akhtar, A-K-H-T-R, and you'll get uh, the YouTube channel, which you'll see all of my shows on there, okay? Yes, sir. So at the end note, uh, myself, Parag, and I would like to thank you on the behalf of SAG, VAG, PDPU family for uh, taking out your... You. I'm going to interrupt you. One second. I'm so sorry. Okay. So sorry, okay. Parag. I forgot <laughs> to give out the last book, all right? So, uh, the last book for, uh, how about Deep Shah for being so oh. persistent. I love people who are persistent and he really, really looks like he wants this book. So Deep, the book is yours with my signature and my best wishes. <laughs> Thank you so much for being so enthusiastic. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll send it to the committee to send on to you. Parag, back to you to close the session. Okay. So. So you okay. Hello, sir. So thank you so much for taking your precious time out and sharing your wonderful thoughts to the university people from uh, India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. It was really a wonderful session. And I guess each and every student uh, would be taking a positive out of it. And uh, we will definitely look to uh, uh, have some more uh, future sessions. And to the old university people, we will definitely stay connected for. Uh, uh, future prospects. So once again, uh, heartily thanks to you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's been really incredible.
to um, uh, basically be on uh, camera with you. Uh, I'm getting requests to show some uh, show some energy. So I want every single person who is on camera just to give me a, th a double thumbs up. A double thumbs up for everyone who's on video. And I want all the people who are not on video just to give me one thumbs up. I don't want to see a single person not giving me a thumbs up. Hey, wow, that's giving me a lot of energy to end this session on. I want you guys and girls to use all the little things. Oh, van fantastic. We're also waiting for your next session, sir. Also waiting for your next session, sir. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's great. I mean, this is brilliant. I want you to send basically uh, feedback to the organizers if you can. I'm sure that Daima will figure out a way that you can send that. I would like to know how much you enjoyed this session. Please use the tips and tricks that I gave you. They should be very useful to you at your age. And pick a task. Pick an impossible goal and make it possible. That's my final message to you. This is Rahman Akhtar from so Saudi Arabia. Sir. Oh, sir. Sir, before sir leaving, sir, we let you know sir when the next session will be there. Sir, please sure. let you know, sir. Yeah, because there's lots of things which I wasn't able to do deep dives. So next session we can make it more focused on just one area okay. that people want to. Thank make. you, sir. And take care, sir. Thank you. Thank you all very much indeed. Love you all. My Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Goodbye, India. Goodbye, Bangladesh. Goodbye, Pakistan. And uh, thank you. It's been amazing. <laughs> I'm going to stay on camera for a little while while everyone disappears. And I will uh, end the meeting uh, in a short while. So thank you, guys. All the very best. Thank you, Dhruv, for the uh, best wishes. I'm glad that you enjoyed the session, Dhruv Apani. You can leave, you are free to leave the session now if you like. Buma is saying thank you, sir, and the panelists. Loved your participation. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Have a fantastic day. Dharti Patel, thank you for your donation. Loved your participation. Enjoy the book. We will get it as soon as possible, okay? Don't worry. Thank you, sir. Not at all. My pleasure. Best of luck with your careers, everybody. Get out there. Vedic is saying thank you for the wonderful session. Thank you so much. Shubham, oh, privately is saying to me, have a nice life journey. And uh, Aman Pandya, thank you. Thank you very much for your appreciation. I love it. Bye, sir. Bye bye. Bye bye, Shubham Singh. Satsriya Kal, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All of it. Thank you. Thank you and goodbye. Drumi is saying, nice Rob Seg family, and thank you, sir, for this joyful session. I, it's been an absolute pleasure. Very much my pleasure. Thank you so much. Bye, sir. Bye-bye. See you. Do all my yaad rakhna, sir. Yaad rakhenge zarur. Bilkul yaad rakhenge. <laughs> Especially in this month of Ramadan and Eid tomorrow, hopefully. So Eid Mubarak to anyone who's celebrating, of course. Especially my brothers and sisters in Pakistan or any Muslims in India. Eid Mubarak to you all tomorrow. I'm going to be eating whatever I like. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm going to be eating whatever I like tomorrow. No dieting tomorrow. But I will exercise. I exercise every day. <laughs> Thank you, Sanya. Um, she's saying Eid Mubarak, sir. Thank you so much. 30 days of fasting. I really need to eat properly tomorrow. <laughs> okay. So in the next uh, couple of seconds, I'm going to end this meeting so that we can all get on with the day. You guys and girls have um, a wonderful day. And Jindal, yes, absolutely. We did it. Yes, sir. We, did. We, did it. <laughs> we did it. We did it. So I will hook up with you later and maybe we can have a post. Yes, uh, yes, uh, sure. 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 Call and we can, we can do some feedback. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic day. That's the meeting. Bye, sir. All the best. Goodbye. Sir. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mm.